as luck would have it, I um, had a pop-up. And my head hurts, but I'm going to read it because it goes with something I just posted a bit ago that I'm going to read, and then I'm going to read this that popped up. But it definitely goes with... Um, I'm sick and tired of people who keep telling me, I love your brutal honesty. First of all, honesty is not brutal. Society is so fake and people lie so much that when someone speaks the truth, people call that shit brutal. Honesty is not brutal. A lie is. So, this is what popped up after my last devotion that I could barely read. But this is lit up and it's bigger and... It, even though my head hurts, I'm reading it because it just goes with it. And I'll just deal with the pain. This is on Crosswalk.com. Is it always sinful to lie? Alyssa wrote, or Root, contributing writer, wrote this November 13th of 2019. Have you ever heard the old adage, whoever says he doesn't lie is a liar? As imperfect humans, we all lie. Well, I don't. It almost seems that we can't help ourselves, whether we're embellishing stories for our friends or we're covering up past sins. I just tell like it is. I've got nothing to hide. I'm as transparent as you can possibly get. But our lies, whether big or little, actually sinful or wrong? Fuck uh, yeah. Or is lying just one of those things people do? It's not right. What is the biblical definition of sin? The Bible describes sin in many ways. One way is a transgression against or violation of God's law. For example, 1 John 3, verse 4. Another is as a rebellion against God, Deuteronomy 9, 7, Joshua 1, 18. However, these definitions don't seem to fully encompass the breadth of sin. Romans 3, verse 23 may give us a clue. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. To sin is to fall short. Sinning doesn't just mean committing crimes, like theft and murder. It also means not doing things that are good, like the truth will set you free. To sin is to miss the standard of perfection set forth by God and lived out by Jesus. Now that we have a working definition of sin, is lying a sin? <laughs> what does the Bible say about lying? The Bible has a lot to say about lying. It's helpful to look at a few specific verses in context. God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, verse 19. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us may be greatly encouraged. Hebrews 6, verse 18. These two verses reveal that not only does God not lie, but is it impossible for God to lie. If sinning is missing God's mark, then we miss God's mark of not lying when we tell falsehoods. This points to an answer to our question of whether lying is a sin. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Proverbs 6, verses 16 to 19. Interestingly, these verses differentiate between a lying tongue and a false witness who pours out lies. The Lord was so vehemently against lies in general and false witness, gossiping, lying in court, lying in a way that hurts others. That Proverbs includes them as two out of seven things that the Lord hates. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his na native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John 8, verse 44. These harsh words from Jesus were directed towards Pharisees, who were accusing him of lying about his identity and claiming they were true followers of God. The important part for us to note, however, is what Jesus says about the devil. 
Jesus calls the devil the father of lies. Oh boy, he's a conniver, <laughs> schemer. And he says that those who lie belong to their father, the devil. If lies are directly related to the devil, we had better take note. Amen. The truth will set you free. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexual immoral, immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars, they will be consigned to the fiery lake of burning sulfur. This is the second death, Revelation 21, verse 8. This fast passage follows a beautiful description of the new heaven and the new earth, where there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Revelations 21, verse 4. However, there are some who will not be welcomed, including all liars. God finds lying a lake of burning sulfur worthy offense. Do not lie to each other since you have taken off your old self with its practices. Christian community can't flourish among lies as the body of Christ. We must all work together as one, which is impossible when deceiving one another. A fortune made by a lying tongue is a fleeting vapor and a deadly snare. Proverbs 21 verse 6. Proverbs is known as a very practical book of the Bible. This verse gives a no-nonsense reason why building anything on a foundation of lies is a bad idea. Lies don't last. Like a fleeting vapor, someone is going to see through the lies. <laughs> Did it all the time with my clients. They tried. You will eventually be caught, and everything will come to ruin. And those lies that keep piling up, you can't keep track of them. But the truth remains the same. It's constant. And I'm living proof. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. Proverbs 12, verse 22. Okay, I've got to read another devotion on top of this one. Is it ever acceptable for Christians to lie? Now, I will honestly say that if somebody gets their hair cut and they love it, I'm not going to tell them it's. I, I don't care for it because it's not my hair. It's them. And if they love it, I love it too. doesn't matter. And to me, that's not a lie. It's what they perceive in themselves is what I love. People forget that about people. When I get extensions in my hair, you can't even imagine what people said to me. When I went blonde, what people said to me. Hurtful things that didn't need to be spoken out loud. They should have kept that shit to themselves. Excuse my language, but that's the facts of life. It was my head hair. It was my body. And it wasn't theirs to judge. But boy, did they. And I didn't even care. I let it go in one ear and out the other. Didn't care. It's not your hair. It's not your body. It's me. It's about me, and it's what I want to do for me. Just like you, the people that want to do Botox and all this plastic surgery to change what God gave you. I don't. I just wanted to try something different. And I, I did it based on a Halloween costume that I got a blonde wig. And I never thought about changing my hair color. And that gave me the courage to do it. So that's what I tell people. If you want to change your hair color, go try on a wig that color first. Before you change your whole head of hair. And it's fun wearing wigs. They're super fun. So I'm going to go back to this. Is it ever acceptable for Christians to lie? I say no. Lying is ingrained into human beings. By the age of four, 90% of children have grasped the concept of lying. According to a study conducted by the Institute of Child Study at Toronto University, while 20% of two-year-olds lie, according to a 2002 study conducted by the University of Massachusetts, 
60% of adults couldn't hold a 10 minute conversation without lying at least once. Really? Unfortunately, the more a person lies, the easier and more tempting it becomes. What well, becomes second nature? A 2016 study conducted by Nature Neuroscience showed that dishonesty actually alters a person's brain at a chemical level. Oh, I can totally see that. And I saw that in men that I dated. Making it easier to lie in the future and making a person more prone to tell even bigger falsehoods. Why is lying one of the most common sins? Lying is relatively easy. Most lies never get caught. Well, wrong. Eventually, they catch up to you. Many lies will tell also feel innocent enough and abridging of the truth to make a story easier to tell. A little extra boost in a recounting of our activities to make us seem like better people saying we're fine when we're not, even giving someone a compliment that isn't truly what we're thinking. We tell these lies so often that we don't feel that prick of conscience we feel from bigger lies or more obvious sins. However, Jesus never differentiated between degrees of sin. He told a crowd that just being angry with someone was as bad as murdering them. Matthew 5 verses 21 through 22 and that just looking at someone lustfully is the same as adultery. Matthew 5, verses 27 through 28. There are no white lies. With all of this in mind, is lying ever okay? Let's consider this scenario. A group of Christians is hiding some Jewish people in their house in Nazi Germany. The Nazis interrogate this family and ask them if they have hidden any Jews. They answer that they have not. This is technically a lie. Is this okay? In terms of situational ethics, is this scenario of lying would not be wrong. Why? Because the Nazis did not deserve to know the truth. Because the Nazis intended to harm and, like, and likely the Jews who were in hiding and very possibly those hiding them. Although this scenario is more extreme, we would not fault those within it for telling a lie. In doing so, they saved lives. So you take one and it's okay for the other? Let's take a look at a Bible passage where we see this take place, where Rahab lies so the spies of Israel do not lose their lives. Joshua 2, verses 4 through 5. But the woman had taken the two men and hidden them. She said, yes, the men came to me, but I did not know where they had come from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly. You may catch up with them. The spies had not left, but her lie saved them. Who invented lying? The first lie in the Bible came from Satan himself when he was tempting Eve. He first accepted a deceptive question. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Genesis 3 verse 1. God in fact did not say that. He only said there must not eat from one particular tree. But the seed was planted. Eve started exaggerating too. God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden and you must not touch it or you will die, Genesis 3.3. 3. In reality, God never said anything about touching the tree. Satan went on, you will certainly die, Genesis 3.4. Instead, Satan said God was holding out on them. If they ate the fruit, they would become like God. And so Eve believed that lie and sin, death, and destruction came into the world. All bad things began because of a lie. False words are powerful. And then there's a post-it, be honest. If God cannot lie, why can humans? Numbers 23:19 and Hebrews 6:18 show that God does not and cannot lie. But we can, why is that? Well, because we're all sinners. In short, we are capable of lying because we are imperfect. Lying is a sin, and so is only something that can be done by a morally imperfect being. God, however, is perfect. Lying is a sin, and thus imperfect. Because of this, God cannot lie and still be perfect. It would be contradictory to his own nature. This should give us great comfort 
we can know at all times that God is never lying to us. We know that all of his promises will certainly come true. Imagine a guy who God who lied. We would have no assurance that we actually we are actually saved. That things will actually turn out right in the end or that God is good. The fact that God does not and cannot lie is one of the very things that makes him God. What should Christians remember before choosing a lie? If we are attempting to follow in Christ's steps and God does not lie, it follows that to live like Jesus did, we should not lie. Even when Jesus was taken before a corrupt court, he refused to lie. He continued to tell the truth that he is the Son of God. For this, he was put to death. At that time, it probably seemed to many that he should have lied and gone free. But the fact that Jesus told the truth, even in this terrible situation, is the very reason that we have the hope for salvation. His truth-telling paved the way for him to conquer sin and death. Sometimes we might think a lie will bring about a greater good. But the Bible never says, don't lie unless you think it will be beneficial. It is a blunt, unequivocal, bull, don't. Jesus didn't lie and he saved the world. The martyr Stephen in Acts 6-7 would have lied about a Christian, but he didn't, and he was stoned to death for it. However, God used this to send the gospel to the Gentiles and even reach out to the Apostle Paul at the time of one of the onlookers was condemning Stephen to death. Meanwhile, Stephen received a glorious vision of heaven right before his death and went to be with his God. Ultimately, lying shows that we do not trust God to take care of us. In our own pride, we think we can maneuver a situation by ourselves toward our best interest, or even for the greater good. Instead, we must cling to the truth, do what God has commanded, and trust him to take care of this situation. The Bible makes it, I want to say, crystal clear that God detests lying. Proverbs 12, 22 reminds us that the Lord delights in people who are trustworthy. Lying hurts our relationship with God and with others. And yet, as sinners in need of a Savior, we all have the ability and propensity to lie. Instead, the Bible calls us to live in honest fellowship with one another and with God. In Ephesians 4, 5, 4 verse 15, we find that speaking the truth in love is a mark of spiritual maturity. God knows we can sin, but he offers something more, choosing truth instead of lies, and saying the truth in a way that builds others up. Jesus calls himself the way and the truth and the life. John 14, verse 6, emphasis, mine. As followers of Christ, let us follow that truth with all of our hearts. So, telling the truth, there's nothing brutal about it. Telling the truth is what God expects out of all of us. See where we have a problem with our current administration and our former administrations? Clear back to when Hamilton was involved? <laughs> That's how far back the corruption and the lies go. That's how long. Look it up. Do your homework. That just filled in the blank for me when I read that. When I while I watch the documentary. So, um, God will keep you from all danger. I got to read this devotion that popped up while I was reading the other. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be called. Isaiah 54, verse 5. 
inspiration. A good husband is a jewel. A woman is blessed if her husband not only loves her and provides for her, but also treats her well and protects her. A good husband treasures his wife. He makes sure that he needs her, that her needs are met. He is her friend and her confidant. He makes her feel safe and he makes her feel confident. Though his eyes, she sees her own beauty and worth. This passage compares God to a husband. He cares for his bride in the same way that an early husband cares for his wife. We can take comfort in the fact that we are safe in the arms of our husband, who is our maker and redeemer. We have nothing to fear. We are loved and cherished by a kind and loving God. Lord, thank you for caring for me, for providing for my needs, for making me feel safe and protected. In you, I see my true worth. I am treasured by you, and your love gives me confidence in you. I am everything. Amen. God's law is universal. Exodus 20, verses 1 through 2. We know in our hearts what is right and what is wrong. It's that simple. Unless you've got a hardened heart. Cold, like stone. And there are people out there. God's law is universal, and this is by Francis Taylor. No one likes to be insulted, to be lied to, to have their possessions stolen or defaced. I could go on, but you already get the idea. We know in our hearts what is right and what is wrong. God's law is imprinted there. It was further defined by the Ten Commandments and even more so by Jesus' law of love. I always tell those unsure about right and wrong to ask themselves first if they wouldn't like it done to them and second, if they need to justify their actions, it's probably wrong. We really don't need to ask if original sin is an outdated idea since we all have a tendency to put ourselves first and God and everyone else in a sometimes distant second or third place. St. Teresa of Calcutta used to say that baptism is a verb, not a noun. It is not something we get, but something we do. What difference does it make in your life that you are a baptized Christian? Does it affect the choices you make? Do you consider some of the commandments mere suggestions? Moses told the people not to add or subtract from the law. Jesus told the Pharisees and scribes that they were hypocrites because they cared more for human precepts and God's law. James warns in his letter that we are not to be stained by the world. I seldom go to the movies and watch mostly reruns on TV because I am offended by the lack of morality presented. I worry about the example parents give when they use obscene and vulgar language in front of their children. The world seems to operate on the lowest level of morality of it gives me pleasure. It's good. If it makes me uncomfortable or gives me pain, it's bad. God's law operates on the highest level, making choices based on the universal good. We are called to strive to be Christ-like. Maybe it's time to take a really good look at the choices we make. Prayer, Lord, we know that your laws are not difficult. That's for sure. But we don't like to be told what to do. We act like unruly children and do what we know we shouldn't. Help us to do a better job of being your children. Give us the graces we need to follow your commands. Amen. Well, I hope you enjoyed those devotions, and I am going to uh, chill with my girls now. And hopefully my head pain starts slowing down, because I just took my loading dose of CBD and THC. And I'm about to take another round of it, because it's just not, it's not doing anything for me. So, on that note, have a great evening, and uh, we'll chat another time. Love to all bunches and bunches. Bye.